Shabbat Shalom and welcome to the book of Acts now, Ecclesia. We're thankful today for what our Father is doing. He's still got it in control. It's still in His hands. We are in the last part of the last days. And Paul said, in the last days, there will be hard times. How much harder is it going to get? We don't know, but we know the one that's taking care of it all. We're in His hands. And if you'll stay in His hands, you'll be safe, you'll be secure, you'll be kept, and you'll be blessed. And that's what we're looking to today. Now, all around this world today, there's people that are got loved ones that have died and gone on. And we're in the midst of holidays. And sometimes the holidays is bad because you are, do not have that loved one to share that holiday with. We're speaking shalom to all today around the world that is got loved ones that are gone on because of all the demonic works of these last days. But we've got to realize, stay in His hands. Let Him take care of you, and you will be blessed. So today, hallelujah, Dr. Margie Bowers is coming with the precious word of Yahweh. The prayers that we're praying here, we're going to sound forth and send them out. We're going to sound forth for the angels to take these messages to those that are hurting, those that are needing a touch of heaven, and it will be done if we'll just trust and believe and let it happen. So today, as Sister Dr. Margie comes, we're going to sound forth the sound for His will to be going out and be done in this world today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, our trip in Africa and our trip in Washington, D.C., it's like making me more mature, 10 or 20 more older than my age. What I saw and what I experienced and what I have heard. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this afternoon, O Lord God. Be thou exalted, glorify, and magnify, Lord, in the midst of your people, O Lord. We thank you, Father, for your dealings in our life and our nation, O Lord. We exalt you in the midst of us, O God. In your name, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. The title of my sermon today is Victory Over the Enemy or Victory Over Darkness. Amen. You know, our trip in, uh, um, um, in D.C. makes a lot of difference in my life because it gives me more awareness of how to fight the enemy. Anyway, the Bible says that he teach our hand to do battle. Amen. We are surrounded and bombarded with a lot of information and a lot of challenges and a lot of problems around us. But our tendency is, what do we do when we are in the midst of problems? And what do we do when we are in the midst of sickness? A lot of you knew that I was 10 days in ICU last year. But you know what? The Lord still sustained you and me, even though we are in our sick bed. Amen? That's not yet the end of the world. And I learned to trust the Lord during the time. But anyway, the Bible teaches, teaches us how to fight our battle. When the, sur the surmountable battle is around us, what do we do? Shall we run to our phone? Or shall we kneel down to the throne? Most people I know... When they are in the midst of problem, grab the phone and call a friend and call somebody to pray for them. But they don't know that the distance of their knee to the floor matters most in the Lord. And the place where they go should be in the throne room of God rather than speaking to their friends. That's why the enemy is trying to, to control us in many things. We don't know how to fight. Because we don't know our battle and we don't know who we are in the Lord. But if we know our battle in the Lord, we know how to fight technically. Amen? So, we don't need to turn on our cell phone, but we have to turn into the throne room of God. Because there is power in the throne because of the presence of the Lord. So, if victory over the enemy is saying, who is my enemy? 
we have to know first who is our enemy in order for us to be victorious over our enemy. Amen? So it says in Ephesians 6.12, turn with me in Ephesians 6.12. I know, I know it, but I have to read it. It says that our enemy are not flesh and blood, but they are spirits. They are principalities and powers and high places. So if we cannot see our enemy, what shall we do? What battle or what arsenal and what spiritual warfare shall we uh, include in here for we are not seeing them for they are not flesh for they are not blood but they are spirits and principalities and powers it needs also a spiritual warfare and second corinthians 4 4 said that the mind of this world our mind or the mind of the unbelievers the the lies and deception of the enemy blinded their mind to keep them seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of God from the image of God. And who is the image of God? The sons and the daughters of God are the image of God. I know a lot of you are good in research in here. But you know what? The Bible says that the image of God is you and me. So nothing can make the enemy tremble except when the sons and daughters of God collaborate and turn into one they are united that makes the enemy tremble the enemy doesn't tremble with your tithes and offerings the enemy doesn't tremble of when you buy a building or whatever but the enemy trembles when the image of god the sons and daughters of god will collaborate together and stand in unity and pray that makes him tremble amen, amen. and also it says restore the image of god in you and me the image of God is not in a lot of people today because of what is happening. There is a voice that cries out that the sons and daughters of God should collaborate together and be in one together to cry out before the Lord. And you know what? There, my husband preached a while, I think many uh, weeks ago, that there is a voice in the blood. The blood cries out. Amen. So if the blood cries out, those babies that has been aborted their blood cries out if 62 million cries out what do you think i have foster children only three when they cry out it makes me crazy how much more the 62 million babies crying out their voices their blood is crying out amen so there needs to be a restoration of the image of God in the sons and daughters of God in order for them to collaborate and to stand united and to pray. You want to defeat the enemy? We need to be united. We need to collaborate as sons and daughters of God. That makes the enemy tremble. So what shall we do? James 4, 7 said, submit to God. He said, submit to God. And also in 1st Peter 5 8 be watchful a lot of us today is just going into the dance into the stream of music we don't even know what is happening we don't watch the Bible says watch so that we will know what to pray I know a lot of my sisters especially I live with <laughs> with the prayer general I know that she is always watching watching the news watching what is happening around why because he she needs to know how to fight the battle so if we don't know how can we fight that's why there needs to be a watching time in us so we don't need to remain ignorant of the schemes of the enemy right. our enemy in john 8 44 is the devil and he is the father of lies he speaks on behalf of his father if the enemy is the father of lies our father is the father of righteousness and justice and peace it's the opposite of that so if the enemy is our opponent and our adversary here we need to know who is our father also because our father is the father of righteousness peace and justice 
Amen. The Bible says that righteousness and justice is the foundation of his throne. And if his throne is justice and righteousness, we cannot be deaf of what is happening around us here. Amen. So our enemy is the father of lies. No wonder when they say, put a mask. Everybody put a mask. They don't understand why they are doing it. Because they are not watchful of what is happening. They just follow the flow. They just follow the music. They follow the dance. But you know what? The enemy wants our mouth to be shut. Because the enemy knows that our mouth is a weapon. That's why the enemy wants us to wear this mask. So that we keep on silence. Because if we collaborate each other and pray and stand together. He has nothing to do but to bow down to the Lord. But. Since we are ignorant, since people are ignorant, they mask their mouth, they close their mouth, they don't speak, they don't collaborate with each other. So that makes the Christians ineffective because their prayer is not in one with the Lord. So we have to know and we have to understand the reason why the enemy is doing this to us. Because when we talk to each other, we plan together. When we talk to each other, we are united to each other. And we plan and we know what to do. Like we have an overnight prayer before, before we went to DC. We have a power night. We call it a power night. Amen. We have to advance from the enemy's thinking. Since we know who is our enemy, what should we do? We already know that we have victory over the enemy and we know the enemy who is he. He is a liar and his father is a liar and he always speaks in behalf of his lying father. So we know already who is our enemy. Now what shall we do? Shall we continue to put mask in our mouth? We have to confront the enemy. The Bible says, confront the enemy. Who is the enemy? Injustice. Leviticus 19.15 says, no injustice. In courts, righteous judges should be in the courts. It, today, a lot of religious leaders, they are silent. They cannot speak about moral justice and the, and the issue of righteousness because they are afraid. Or they are fearful of ostracism and they are afraid of retaliation. Because they believe that we will be separated from the society. From the injustices in the society. But it is very, very clear that the Bible says that we need to be involved. We need to be involved because nobody will speak righteousness unto them if we will not be involved. Like I read this morning in our prayer that we are trained to do good. Amen. We are trained to do good. Goodness didn't sprout in between two trees in just one night it is to be trained in us we have to learn to do good and we will continue to do good we have to learn training in here on how to do good and how to do righteousness and we have to know uh, uh, justice so Proverbs 29 11 says righteous know the right of the poor but the wicked does not so are you righteous? Are we standing in righteousness? Because if the righteous knows the rights of the poor, we have to understand what we will do and what we are involved with in order for us to help those injustices that is happening. But the wicked doesn't, doesn't know about all this. We know all this because the Bible says us that we have to be involved. So what does the Bible say about social injustice? Learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's cause. Amen? Amen. Who is the first helper, helper of the widow? Those that understand righteousness and justice. And who will stand to those uh, helpless babies that are aborted we that understand it doesn't need that everybody of us will fly to DC we need to fly every one of us to Washington DC as what I have said our hands is trained for battle our mouth needs to do praises unto the Lord because what we do in secret the father knows it as we go deeper everybody says deeper deeper, deeper. so when we go deeper 
Like in the ocean, when you go fish, you go deeper. You cannot catch the fish in the surface, right? But you have to cast your net on the right side and go deeper. It's the same thing in prayer and in, uh, and in worship. When you cast your net in prayer and in worship, you go deeper in your prayer, you go deeper in your worship unto the Lord. As you go deeper, everything that you catch in your prayer on the depth of your prayer and, and, uh, uh, and worship, they are all yours. What enters your net is yours because nobody will pull the net. It is you who will pull the net and all the fish in your net is yours. Because you are the one who go deeper, you are the one who cast the net. So, our battle is not flesh and blood. So we need to use the arsenal of weapon here, especially prayer and worship. So our mouth praises God. It releases God's hand to fight for us for our battle. And our hands needs to do prophetic gestures. And our feet needs to do prophetic gestures. These are our weapons that is attached to us. Our mouth is attached to us, our hands and our feet is in us. So we have to learn how to use our hands and to use our mouth. We will not allow the enemy to, to crush us in depression. For we know that when our mouth prays, the spirit of depression leaves, right? So why we remain silent when we know that there is a solution? Why we put a mask in our mouth that when we know, when we cast out depression, it will leave us? This is a weapon. So if you don't use your weapon, the enemy will use it against you. So use your mouth to praise the Lord and to uh, go deeper in worship and in prayer. As what I have said, go inside the closet and close the door behind you. Because when you enter the closet and the door is still open, you will still hear, hear the world. You will still hear your washing, your laundry, and whatever. But when you go inside your closet and close the door behind you, you are the only one that is with the Father, and the Father is waiting for you. Amen. He is a consuming fire inside your closet. And that fire that consumes you and me, consumes our, our iniquities and many uh, things in us. The Father is just waiting for us. Amen. Isaiah 117 said, Plea the cause of the widow also at the end of it. So we are also the helpers of the widow. I understand that because my mother was a widow. Amen. So correct oppression. We will not make our ears deaf when we see somebody is oppressed by the enemy. We have to learn how to uh, do uh, healing and deliverance. Praise the Lord. There is a class here on uh, anointed to bring freedom and healing and deliverance. So we are learning on how to correct oppression of the enemy among these people or people outside. So if we don't know how to do it, how can we help people? How can we help the oppressed? So we have to learn it. Amen. Amen. And also uh, the Bible says that when we see people that are deprived of their social privileges like social justice, concept of fair and just relationship between the individual and the society it is measured by equal distribution of wealth opportunities for personal activity and for uh, uh, our family so when we see that there are oppression like this we will not keep silent it doesn't mean that we will bring our gun and we have to fight no back again our weapon is our mouth we have to pray for these people and we have to do prophetic gestures with our hand in order that the enemy sees that we are serious, that we will do damage in the kingdom of darkness. Now we know already how uh, uh, to confront the enemy. We will go now how we can overcome the enemy. Amen. Since we know already who is our target then what shall we do in order to target our, our enemy? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
No temptation has overtaken you except such is common to men. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Praise God. Hallelujah. So every temptation, everything that we see, we are able to, to overcome it because the Lord is our helper. And also he gives us victory. It says Psalms 18 uh, verses 47 to 50. I will summarize it. He gives me victory. Verse 48. He saves me from my foes. He protects me from violent people. It is only the Lord. The symbol of arm is the power of God. When God stretches his arm, he stretches his power. Amen. And it symbolizes his strength. So he saves us from our foes. The Lord saves us and gives victory over our enemies. No one can give us victory, but only the Lord. He is the one that can deliver us from all our enemies. And also in Deuteronomy 20 verse 4. The Lord fight for you against your enemy to give you victory. Here again, it is the Lord who will give us victory, not our strength, not our power, and not our uh, powerful arsenal. He is the one that gives us victory in all our battles. So this is our weapon. When we are in the Lord and we pray for the Lord for victory and he will deliver us. Like in the battle of Jehoshaphat. Early in the morning, they seek to pray, and the Lord gives them direction on what to do. We want to humiliate the enemy. Psalm 18, 34, it says, He teaches my hand to make war, so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. In another translation, it says, He teaches, He trains my hand to do battle. So that I can bend the bow of bronze. Wow. I don't know what is bronze. But I know bronze is strong. And an ordinary hand without the power of God. You cannot bend it. But the Lord trains our hand. So that's why. If you can train a dog. If you can hire an instructional assistant. Or trainer to a dog. The dog obeys. How much more your hand. Your hand is attached to your body. And in your central nervous system. What you think your hand goes. What you think and what you plan, you carry it with your hand. That's why our hands can be trained. And that's the only way that you can humiliate the enemy. Your mouth will secure victory. Because when you do praise and worship and prayer, you humiliate the enemy. If you know how. By engaging praise, we transfer our battles to Him. So when we are in our battlefield like sickness, disease, whatever a person has, if they know how to praise the Lord that can move God, then this battle is not in your hands anymore. You transfer that battle into the hands of God by what? By your praise and your worship and by your prayer. That's why it's very important that we will go deeper in our prayer. And we will go to the deep in our prayer and in our praise and worship. Because when we worship the Lord shallow on the surface, what is the result? Nothing, because you don't even touch the heart of God. Seconds done. We are in a hurry. But you know what? Engage in praise and worship so that the battle that is in your hand, it will be transferred into the hands of God through praise and worship. It is a God-given weapon in our hands, which we can humiliate the enemy. You know what? I was researching this morning. I said that other people said it's just simple. But you know what? Worship takes effort. Worship is prayer and prayer is worship. And warfare is also a hard work. 
So that's why what it takes to get the problem from your hands and place it in the hands of God, it takes deep worship and deep prayer. Amen? If we cannot contend, we cannot possess what belongs to us. We know that the battle doesn't belong to us, but we need to wage war and we need to wage battle in order to get the thing that is belongs to us. If it needs that we will rip it in the hands of the enemy, we will do it. Because the enemy gripped it so strongly that we cannot get it if it's just an ordinary simple prayer. But we need to go deeper in the deep in our worship and in our prayer. And you know, in the battle of Jehoshaphat, as I said, Second Chronicles 20 to 24, he assigned people who will sing, who can praise the beauty of his holiness. It's not only that you know how to sing, but you have to touch the throne of God. You have to touch the beauty of his holiness. Amen. It doesn't mean that you will have an angelic voice in order for you to touch the beauty of the Lord's holiness. But they appointed people, I mean, spirit-filled people who can praise the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Not to praise the Lord in the surface. No, they didn't say on the surface. Touch the beauty of His holiness. Those should sing to the Lord who can praise the beauty of His holiness. And you go deeper in praise and prayer. What you get in your prayer, deeper is yours. So, one time we attend in a, in a revival. This woman is saying, here in America to raise children is a battle. And she said, it is a battle if you use, if you use gifts and money to raise your children. It's a battle. But your, your defense and your battle is on your knee. It's on prayer. Because before you even wake up, the enemy is already weakened in your prayer. How can they attack your children? They are already weakened. Before the sun rises in the morning, the enemy is already, the wings of the enemy is already broken. Because you contend before your child even wakes up in the morning. Your prayer goes before the sun rises in the morning. So this woman said, I didn't feel difficult to raise my children because all of them obey me. Because I don't sleep in the night i do warfare i do battle for my children when they wake up in the morning the fleshly thing in them is already subdued in my prayer before even sunrise so it is a challenge to raise children here in america but you know what it is also a challenge in the part of a mother that's why it says that the mother is the keepers of truth in the home if we mothers doesn't know this, we have to learn about this. That our defense for our children is prayer before they even wake up in the morning. Anyway, this our spiritual warfare. We need to uh, go into the throne room and we have to declare our victory in there. When we go to the restaurant, we sit down in the table and we order, right? But when we go in the throne room in our prayer room and worship we want to move heavens with our prayer and we want to order how our prayers will be presented before the lord it can be mild it can be hot it can be nuclear you choose what kind of prayer you have if you want to swim in the surface you have that medium prayer if you will lord you can do it but you want your prayer counts and you want to be the kingdom shaker in the kingdom of darkness you have to learn to go deeper in your prayer and determine what kind of prayer you will present before the lord because if we only pray in the surface nothing will happen but if we want to do damage in the kingdom of god we have to go deeper in in our prayer you know, last night, I didn't know that I'm using my black notebook, this thing. This notebook has been like dated 2-12-2011. And I have written here several prayers because I said, 
I don't want to be a nominal Christian. I want to do damage in the kingdom of God. You teach my hand how to do battle. And I didn't even know. My husband told me you have to preach because I'm tired. And you know what? I said, yeah, I'm here. I'll back you up. I said, just tell me when. And you know, when I was researching, I saw my notebook like this. And this was written many, many years ago, like 11 years ago. Spiritual warfare prayer. And I write it with my own hands. I didn't type it because when I write and read, it resonates to my heart and it makes me more aware what I'm doing. I wrote in here, my prayers can be mild. My prayers can be medium. My prayers can be hot. And my prayers can be nuclear, like a nuclear weapon that can make explosion in the camp of the enemy. And I didn't know that after 11 years, I have to use it. But you know what? Determine what kind of prayer you will have when you go to the prayer room. This is up to you. If you want damage to the kingdom, do a better work. If you want just to touch the surface, just slip a little bit. Amen. But you know what it says in here? Mild. Lord, bind up in me anything of the enemy that would keep me from hearing you. It says that he's not hearing a little bit. But anything that comes in between from hearing God. Medium. Lord, I know that the demons are real. And that I should be making more of a difference. But I'm kind of scared. That's a medium kind of prayer. But you know what? Go a little bit higher. When you order in the restaurant, you want the best recipe, right? So when you're in the prayer room, you have to seek also a little bit hot and nuclear a prayer. So when you want hot, Lord, I need more than I've got. Please give me more discernment of spirit so that I can see the enemies and tell the difference better. Follow the directions in all things you gave me. Give me wisdom in fear of the Lord. You know what? In hot prayer, it needs the fear of the Lord. It's not just that you know the Lord. You need to have fear and reverence before the Lord in order for you to wage your war in prayer. Yeah. I want to be more dangerous to my foes. Please bring people into my path that I can minister to and begin to practice the things that you taught me. So this is a hot prayer. Remember, I didn't plan this, but the Lord led me to go back to this old notebook. And it says in here, nuclear. I want to do as much damage to the badness as I possibly can. I know there is war and I said I would go. So in the uh, nuclear power prayer, you know that there is a war. And you know that you want to go. But you want to do more damage in the kingdom of God. Anyway, when you want to destroy the enemy, don't just prick him. Explode him, right? Mother is laughing at me. And it says in here, Whatever it takes, whatever it costs, whatever I have to lay down or repent or give up, I don't care. Have your way, Lord. If there is something that I have, Standing between me and you, show me, I will lay it down to you. But if I cannot surrender it, I will tell the Lord, rip it off from me. Because this is the one that's standing in between my prayer. So please do whatever you want to do to me. That I can do as much damage to the enemy and his forces as possible. You know what? When we damage the kingdom of the enemy, he is so shaken. That nothing can can shake the enemy when our niece is on the carpet praying so nuclear prayer give me authority to rip shred and crush them I cannot believe I wrote this 10 years ago when I was reading this I cried and it says split down their throats it says I want to be heaven's pit ball you know better when you live in ranch what you have if you have a pit ball Help me to hear direction really well and obey all the time. Break me into little pieces so that I'll be humble. I will never make this about me. It's all about you, Lord. Bring it on. I'm not scared. I wrote like that. 
And then I said, Lord, give me a rock. Show me the Goliath today. I want to take out some big ones for you. I trust this prayer is inside of your will, Lord. I come in the name of the Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, and make this petition directly into the throne room of God. Why is it very important that we, when we pray, we have to go in the throne room, room of God? Because there are a lot of destruction outside there. When we are in the throne room, we in the Father, we are just two. And we can make our petitions directly into His, His throne. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. You know, I told my husband this morning, I found something good. I didn't mean it. I didn't research it. The Lord just tell me, use that black notebook. And I, I scan. I said, wow, this is fitted of what I will do today. And I will use this. Anyway, I thank the Lord. Thank you for, for um, letting me share all this. The Lord is placing into my heart that even though we are just a small congregation, but I can see already the, the footage because we are doing the healing and deliverance anointed to bring freedom in here. I can see already that even we are such a small uh, um, gathering here, a small uh, fellowship here. But you know what? The enemy doesn't care. The enemy doesn't care. But even if we are small, if we do what is right and we are training our hands and we are training our mouth, we can do damage in the kingdom of God. Amen. And I thank those who are coming. I think there are 12, <clears throat> which is the number of government. And I like that number because it's, uh, it's easy to, uh, I think, to teach and manage, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. If, tonight, if this afternoon, your heart cry is to be one among those who will pray and bring damage to the kingdom of God, wherever you are, the Lord sees your heart. We are not here as an accident that we are here but we are here because we have a lot of work to do and if we collaborate together as sons and daughters of God we can help damage the kingdom of, of darkness and we can help push the darkness until it is totally out in our country in our government and in our state I know a lot of people here are praying but how much more it will be effective if each and every one of us will collaborate in prayer oneness and prayer because we are sons and daughters of God the Lord is calling his sons and daughters of God to do his work in the last days if you are that person and if you want to be used this last days wherever you are let's pray together amen, amen. hallelujah Lord we thank you this afternoon, O oh Lord God, we give you praise, Yeshua HaMashiach, for we know, O oh Lord God, that the battle doesn't belong to us, O oh Lord. The battle belongs to you, O oh Lord God. For thy word says, O oh Lord God, that you will arise and you will shine, O oh Lord God, in the midst of darkness, O oh Lord. We pray, Father, for each and every woman here today, O oh Lord God, that they want to be used, O oh Lord God, to bring damage in, your, in the kingdom of darkness, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that you strengthen them, O oh Lord God. Help them, O oh Lord Yeshua, to go deeper, O oh Lord, in their worship. Help them go deeper in their, in their prayer, O oh Lord God. Everything that they catch on the depth, O oh Lord God, it will be theirs, O oh Lord. For we know, O oh Lord God, that the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, O oh Lord God, casting imagination that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Father, I pray, O oh Lord God, that we will surrender our mind unto you, O oh Lord God. Anything that stands in between, O oh Lord, that we can receive, O oh Lord God, the thing that we need, O oh Lord God, that power from you, O oh Lord Remove it from us, O God, or cause us, O Lord God, to voluntarily surrender it, O Lord. We give you praise this afternoon, O Lord God, and we give you glory and praises and thanksgiving, Lord, for yours is the victory, O God. Yours is the kingdom and power, O Lord. We give you praise. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen.